Hi guys, welcome to H2O. This is Lesson 7C and we are continuing our efforts to understand worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, King of all kings and Lord of all lords, we bow our heads, we bow our knees before you, Lord. We ask you first and foremost to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us, Lord, to make us clean before you. Not of anything we've done do we deserve any of this, Lord. We, we understand that it's just by your mercy, just by your love and your grace that you offer this forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name. We worship you. We give you the honor that is due your name. We know you are holy. We know you are righteous, Lord. Teach us today more from your word, Lord, as we seek to understand how to please you, how to worship you with the whole heart, in spirit and in truth, because you seek such worship. You are pleased by such things. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, for loving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue into today's reading first, and then we'll cover yesterday's cliffhanger. So for today, you're to read Psalm 19, verses 1 through 14, and Psalm 150. It's a short psalm. Read the whole thing, Psalm 150. Then consider the questions that are down below. First of all, what type of book is Psalms? And then the question is consider all of creation. Just think about creation for a little bit. Think about uh, the rainbows that you see. Think about sunsets. Think about the beautiful vistas, maybe when you're on vacation and you're overlooking the ocean or the mountains, the Mediterranean, all the different places of the world that are just beautiful. Um, this moon, the stars, the different planets. Think of all of creation. What does such beauty and the scope of so many different created things, what does this teach us about worshiping God? Consider that, and uh, we'll check back with, in with you tomorrow. And uh, now for yesterday's cliffhanger, we're going to Luke chapter 7, starting in verse 36 through the end of that chapter, verse 50, and Hebrews 13, verses 15 and 16. The story there that plays out is uh, Jesus is at the home of a Pharisee. Um, presumably there's a meal. Um, but since Jesus entered, the Pharisee didn't do anything for him, which is pretty standard of the day for someone that you're honoring. Now, it doesn't mean you'll do it for absolutely everybody that comes to your house. But if you wanted to show honor to a guest in Jesus' day that came to your home, you're going to wash their feet. You're going to give them fresh water. And you're going to wash their feet. And you're also going to anoint their head with a fragrant oil, um, which kind of like perfume or a fragrant oil. Um, you're going to honor them in these ways. You're also probably going to kiss them on the cheek um, to show honor to them. Did this Pharisee honor Jesus that came to his house? Apparently he didn't because Jesus said straight to the Pharisee, you did none of this for me. But this woman, yeah, a sinner. Okay. Um, there is... Um, there's been a lot of discussion over the years that possibly she was a prostitute. Um, some think that she is Mary Magdalene. Um, I'm not here to debate any of those things. But regardless of who she is, Jesus has described what she's done as honoring him. That she has literally been at his feet, kissing his feet, crying and using the very hair of her head to wipe it up and to dry his feet. So the question here, well, the first question is what type of book is Luke? And that is New Testament history. 
If you're unclear how to answer that, you can go back to Lesson 2A, where we discuss Bible basics. And then um, the book of Hebrews, which is uh, also to be read, uh, was to be read yesterday. That book is a New Testament letter or an epistle. Then the question, why do you suppose the woman is crying, is weeping? There's a lot of different things that could be going through the woman's mind. She could be literally crying over her sins and asking in her heart for forgiveness. For maybe she feels like her life has just been wasted. She's ruined her life. Um, and that day, if by the time your dis, uh, people have decided that you're a prostitute, you're not going to have many options left in your life. A good guy's not coming along to marry you. So maybe she's crying over her ruined life. She could be crying just due to worship. That the presence of Jesus Christ is moving her literally to tears. To just have that time that he's not kicking her away. He's not shooing her away. He's not calling her names. He's not calling her out. He's not calling attention to her in any way. He is receiving her worship. He's letting her cry at his feet. And maybe she's just humbled. Maybe she just genuinely feels such love for the man, Jesus Christ. And maybe she recognizes in her spirit that this is God. Um, there's many ways to answer that. There's no real right or wrong. Uh, why do you suppose the woman was weeping? Whatever you suppose. So there's no right or wrong there. But just think, I wanted you to slow down. I wanted you to put yourself in that story and think about why she could be crying. And then, according to these passages, when and how often should we praise God? Well, that's over there in Hebrews. Let's turn over there to Hebrews 13, verses 15 and 16. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Continually. How, how, when and how often should we praise God? Constantly. Constantly. Praise him. You know, throughout the Old Testament, God was always upset when the Hebrews would um, complain instead of coming to him. He's like, all you got to do is ask me. Don't complain. Ask God for whatever it is you need. What do you need? Have you asked him sincerely in faith believing? Have you? Be a praiser. He literally inhabits the praise of his people. Praise him. If it's tough to praise Him right now, if your circumstances make it to where it just seems hard to praise, I don't feel like praising Him, ah, all the better. All the better. Because then it's a sacrifice of praise. Offer Him a sacrifice of praise. He sacrificed for you. He hung on that cross for hours, being beaten beyond recognition, beyond recognition as a human being. They literally pulled his beard out by the roots. He sacrificed. Offer him a little sacrifice of praise. I hope you're having a blessed day and check back in tomorrow when we'll continue talking on the subject of worship. Yeah.